Greetings, Aimless Adventure Crew, and welcome to another episode of Murph's Vault. Back in 1979, Star Wars A New Hope had been out for two years. Kenner Toys, the licensee who was making the Star Wars action figures, had been making figures for a little over a year, and they had been very successful. It was in this at this time where they came out with their first mail away figure, which is legendary. That mail away figure was to be a special character named Boba Fett, who was going to appear in the sequel to Star Wars called The Empire Strikes Back. And this figure was initially um, advertised as having a missile firing backpack. Um, I got here, this is not a real one. This is actually a copy from China of one of the prototypes of the missile firing Boba Fett. Um, this was never, this figure was never sold, this figure was never mailed out to anyone, because Kenner Toys decided to nix this mechanism and had the little missile actually glued into the backpack. Now, why is that? You're also wondering, why did I introduce Battlestar Galactica at the beginning of this video? Because the two are related. Actually, there is a lot of connections between Battlestar Galactica and Star Wars from back then, but one of them was led to one of the most legendary toys in toy collecting, and that's the rocket-firing Boba Fett. This figure never made it to production. The only ones that are out there are prototypes that were in the hands of Kenner employees at the time when it was being built. So if any of you know, you've heard, might have heard stories of a friend that knew a friend that had one that was mailed to him, no. It was never manufactured. Um, those that like to collect Star Wars action figures, some people consider it the pinnacle of their collection if they're able to obtain one. Me, since it was never manufactured, I consider it more of a prototype. And there are people that like to collect prototypes, um, but it's nothing that, I mean, nothing I would turn down if I could get one, if I could afford one, but it's nothing I'm going crazy over to finish my collection. Like I said, it was never made. Some of them out there, um, a lot of them are unpainted, like this one. Some of them are painted. Some of them have a broken mechanism that were broke. Uh, they broke during testing. Some of them are still functional. Um, there's actually two different firing mechanisms, the L slot, which this is, and a J slot as well. But once again, back to why was the rocket firing mixed? Well, it had to do with these toys from Battlestar Galactica. What uh, Mattel, who had, been, who had gotten the license to make toys on from the Battlestar Galactica TV series. They made an action figure line, um, three and three quarters inch, same scale as Star Wars, and I'll show those to you in another video. They made a couple large size action figures. Um, they made some games and some role playing like laser pistol toys. And they also made a series of small ships. This here is the Cylon Raider from the TV show. Um, and it was these ships that actually put the kibosh on the rocket firing Boba Fett. What these ships had, and I'll show you with this one, and I'll show you the other examples I have here. Um, they all had a cockpit that opened up, and it had a small little pilot. Here we have the Cylon, which is somewhat accurate to the Cylon in the TV show, not 100%. I don't know if you can see it focused very well. But they also had little launchers that fired these little red missiles. And they had a little button here, and I don't want them to shoot me or hit me in the eye. You know how dangerous that is, which is what this is part of. This is the little missile. Well, once again, I'm not an expert, but from what I've been able to read up over the years is that there was an incident where a child shot one of these missiles into his throat and choked to death. It was an unfortunate incident. Um, Mattel had to go through a lawsuit um, due to that, and... What happened was there was a production change in these toys where when you push the button to launch the missile, the missile just shot out a little bit but did not leave the vehicle. Um, now there is a way to modify those so they do shoot, but that I'm not going to teach you. <coughs> but So that happened to Mattel. At the same time, Kenner was creating the rocket firing Boba Fett. Uh, Kenner's lawyers um, knew about this lawsuit that was happening. They saw the same mechanism. Uh, same sort of problem that could happen with Boba Fett uh, action figure. And so Kenner decided to test out a couple different launching mechanisms. The problem with the L slot, which is what this is, you'll notice it's an L shape there. 
it can fire accidentally just with the slightest pressure, which would cause this little red missile to hit you in the eye or in the mouth and swallow it, whatever. They also tried a J firing, but that had a very small trigger that could break very easily, and then you got a plastic splinter that can get in the child's eye. So they decided to nix this. Hence became one of the number one legends of Star Wars toy collecting. So you know that just shot out as well. But anyway, so back to the Battlestar Galactica small ships. So anyway, this was one, the Cylon Raider. That's what we know, iconic from the show. The wings open up, fires out two of those little missiles. Pretty cool. They also made one for the iconic Viper flown by the colonial forces of the Galactica. This has one missile that fires out the front, the buttons here in the front there, the missile fires out. It has some gravity operated wings that are there, and then it has a cockpit, but unlike in the show where it raised from the back, this raises from the front. And inside is your little colonial pilot. So there was the the Cylon Raider and the Colonial Viper. However, Mattel did not stop at just these two little toys. They also made a few others. These were some toys that were never seen on screen, but were seen slightly off screen, i.e. they were made up very much like the mini rigs that Kenner did for the Star Wars toy line. This here is the Scarab, and it was like a land-based vehicle. It has six wheels, three on each side. It has a cockpit very similar to the Viper, a little shorter, and there's it has a red little missile that shoots out as the cockpit that opens with the viper in there the front also raises up so you can kind of like use it as an artillery piece um, at the back it also has another launcher that has two little red missiles that fire out as well um, on the side it has these little hatches that open that kind of expose the engine compartments pretty neat you know eh, kind of cool but anyway that was the scarab Never was seen in the TV show, but still, I think it's a pretty cool design. It's like the race car of the Colonial Forces. The other ship they had was called the Stellar Probe. Notice they uh, put it on the side here so you won't forget. Once again, it had a cockpit very sim uh, identical to the Scarab that has a launcher up front. Um, this cockpit also comes off. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But it also had this tail section that had two missiles that also shot out there um, and it was called the Stellar Probe. Now the Stellar Probe also came with another smaller piece. It looked like a satellite that we would have from the 1970s and this thing could open up with this little, I don't know, I guess you would call them solar panels or whatnot. And it would open up there. Now, this part also came apart like so. And what you could do is you could take the Stellar Probe, take off the cockpit, take off this back piece, and you were left with the body. You could then stick the engine on there, the front piece on there, then you got a little rocket that could then launch. Pretty cool. What do you do with the other two pieces? You then put them together, and you got a little mini Viper. Yeah. So anyway, the Stellar Probe is actually two little vehicles, I guess. One has three missiles. This one doesn't have any missile at all. But anyway, there was also a fifth vehicle that was made. It was the, the Land Ram. The Land Ram was seen in the TV show. It was a rectangle box shape um, vehicle that traveled on the ground. It traveled on tank treads. It was in a few episode, uh, episodes. It was in the original uh, pilot episode slash movie uh, when they were on Carillon. Um, and I believe it was a few more. Ice Planet Zero it was on and so on. Um, but anyway, that toy, to the best of my knowledge, it was never sold here in the U.S. It was only sold in Canada. And then I believe it was only mail order. But that part I could, or through like a toy catalog or something. But that I could be wrong. But I do believe it was only available in Canada. Hence, that makes it very hard to find. It is one of the holy grails of the Battlestar Galactica, the classic Battlestar Galactica toys. So, that shows you these little ships that Mattel made back in the day based on Battlestar Galactica and their connection 
to Star Wars and Boba Fett and how they affected our Star Wars toy collecting and playing back in the day when we were a kid. Because everybody wanted Boba Fett. Anyway, thank you for joining me, and I'll be back in another week with another episode of Murph's Vault. Now I return you to your aimless adventure. Later.